Hamlet once said, To be, to be or, not, or to not to be, to be. That, that is the, is question. the question. But in this case, the real question should be, How to be? How to exist? What is the reality and how do we know that we are part of the so-called reality? In this crash course video, we will see what George Berkeley take on this topic is. But before that, let's have a short background on John Locke and his materialism theory. John Locke said that we are born knowing nothing, tabula rasa, a blank slate that everything we know comes from sense experience. For example, this is Jasper. By perceiving him, I can tell what his height is, his width, his depth, his weight, his color, his sounds, etc. Locke divided the said qualities into two, primary and secondary qualities. Primary being the qualities that the object or mass has. Secondary being the qualities that we perceive from the object or matter. And of course, each of us perceive things differently, which may lead to different answers. What may be loud for you may be soft for me, and what may be green for you may be red for me. The primary qualities are his height, mass, solidity, density, depth, so on and so forth. The secondary qualities are his color, taste, texture, smell, and sound. This is where George Berkeley finally comes in. George Berkeley argued that one cannot simply perceive some qualities of an object or matter while disregarding another. You cannot see the figure or shape of something without seeing its color or texture first. Imagine him without the color. You can't write. You still see black, white, or something. Imagine him without the texture of his skin. You still can't write. It's either glossy, silky, smooth, and that's still a kind of texture. This is when George Berkeley came up with his own philosophy. He said that there is no material substance that exists, no objects, no materials, no nothing or whatsoever. Everything is simply made up of ideas or sensation, which exists in the mind, for as long as they are perceived. How does perception work? Basically, if I can feel, hear, taste, or smell something, then it probably exists. This is called immaterialism theory, or referred to others as subject idealism. This is also regarded as an extreme type of empiricism. Empiricism, the theory that all knowledge derived from sense experience. In short, his philosophy is only made of two things, the perceived objects, sensation, ideas, and perceivers, or as I quote from George Berkeley himself, S.S. Percepi. So, you must be thinking of a very important question. If I am here in this room, and Jasper is outside, and he is all alone, lonely, cold, abandoned, with no one to love and care for him, and most importantly, no one to perceive him. Does that mean he will cease to exist? Alright, alright. Let's try something simple, because the matter of the heart is complicated. So, you must be thinking, if no one is perceiving Jasper, does that mean Jasper will cease to exist? Wrong. Wrong! George Berkeley says that if a person saw a table, then that table existed. If nobody saw that table, or in our case, Jasper, then will he continue to exist? Yes! Why? Because there is an infinite mind that perceives us all, and that is God. Then, how do we say that this so-called God exists? Is there any evidence? Actually, George further argued that it is God who causes us to experience physical objects by directly willing us to experience matter. Therefore, the fact that we can sense or experience matter 
and that the higher being is allowing us to experience this thing is an evidence in itself that God exists. So Berkeley's view of reality might be summed up as follows. There exists an infinite spirit in a multitude of finite spirit, and we are in communication with God via our experience. Thus, what we take to be our whole experience of the world is analogous to God's language. So, in simple terms, you and I, we are perceivers. Everything else in the world are only something we perceive. Perceptions. But humans, like you and me, are only finite spirits. God, a being who perceives all, is an infinite spirit. Our experience in the world is an evidence to God's existence because this so-called experience is the same as God's language. We communicate with God through our experience. That's it! So, in this video, we learned a bit about John Locke's materialism theory as a prelude to George Berkeley's immaterialism theory or subject idealism. In between, we also learned about empiricism. And this, this is our performance test for philosophy. So, sir, if you are watching this,